Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, now time is two thirty. Uh, we will shortly start our session. Uh, first of all, shall we start the session? Yes, yes. I'm ready. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir. Uh, first of all, I welcome Dr. Sahib uh, Mungas. Today is our chief guest. Uh, first of all, thank you, sir, for joining with us and accept our uh, invitation. And welcome to our students of RIT and the participants from various uh, other institutions to a webinar on 6G wireless technology and its application. And uh, on behalf of RIT, uh, RIT management principal and head of the CAC. Uh, now I'm going to introduce our chief guest to participants. Uh, I'm very glad to introduce our uh, uh, chief guest. Uh, Dr. Sahid Mumtaz has more than 12 years of wireless industry experience and is currently working as senior research scientist and a technical manager at CS Portugal. Uh, prior to his current position, he worked as research intern at Ericsson and Huawei Research Labs in 2005 at Karls Karlskrona, uh, Sweden. He received his MSc and PhD degrees in electrical and electronic engineering from Wilkins Institute of Technology, Karlskrona, Sweden, and University of Aveiro, uh, Portugal, in 2006 and 2011, respectively. Dr. Sahid. MSc and PhD were funded by Swedish government and FCT Portugal. He has been involved in several easy R&D projects in the field of green communication and next generation wireless systems. In easy projects, he holds the position of technical manager where he oversees the project from uh, a project from a scientific and technical side, managing all details of each work packages which gives the maximum impact of the project results for further development of commercial solution. He has been also involved two Portuguese funded projects, Smart Vision and Mobilia, in the area of networking, coding, and development of system level simulator for the 5G wireless system. Dr. Sahid has several years of experience in three GPP uh, radio systems, research with experience in, in HSPA, LTE, LTA, and strong track record in the relevant technology field, especially physical layer technologies, LTE cell planning and optimization protocol, and stack system architecture. Dr. Shahid, a research interest will lie in the field of architectural enhancement to 3GPP networks, uh, 5G uh, NR related technologies, green communication, cognitive radio cooperative networking, radio resource management, network slicing, cross layer design, back call and front call, heterogeneous networks, M2M and D2D communication, and baseband digital signal processing. Dr. Dr. Sahid has more than 150 uh, publications in international conferences, journal papers, and book chapters. Dr. Mumtaz is a senior member of IEEE. He has awarded an Alien Grossman Fellowship by ERCIM to pursue research communication networks for one year at the VTT Technical Research Center of Finland in 2012. He was nominated chair for IEEE new standardization on P1932.1, standard for licensed unlicensed, unlicensed spectrum interoperability in wireless mobile networks. This standardization result from Dr. Mumta's novel idea on Wi-Fi licensed band. He is also actively involved in 3GPP standardization on LTE release 12, uh, onwards along with the major infrastructures. Thank you, sir. And thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to introduce our uh, chief guest. And also uh, very uh, welcome and very thanks to Dr. Vimal from the National Engineering College. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for all. And now I'm hand over to our chief guest, Mr. Shahid, to take over the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Vinkadesh, for your long and nice introduction. So let me start now without any break. So to know how to share the screen so uh, in in bottom there is a one uh, instruction sir present now no not present one now. icon okay. uh, yes sir. one icon is there present now in in nearby three dots sir. okay so everyone can see my screen now Yes, yes, sir. Okay, okay, so I can start now. Okay, 
so let's start uh, with the let so currently i'm working as a professor at institute of telecommunication portugal and alto university of essex and i am also a senior consultant at huawei which i started in january 2020 for the 5g so today i will talk about 6g what is happening in this academia and also on this industry mostly in huawei perspective in europe and uh, also some uh, perspective from samsung from korea also so let's start uh, into discussion now okay so today is more or less i will take 1 hour and 30 minutes i will try to finish within that time so i start with the 5g progress then i will talk on mega trend toward 6g 6g service classes and scenarios and then 6g requirements what are the candidate technologies for the 6g and uh, what are the timeline and the business model for 6g so in fact i have a separate presentation on 5g but i will not talk uh, more detail today about 5g because we don't have a time so maybe some other time i will discuss separately on the 5g technologies so i just here give you the brief introduction what is the 5g is and where we are so if you see the building block of 5g which is already started deploying in many countries across europe asia and uh, basically the building block is the following we have the customer and then we need a spectrum which is going to be talked with the base station and then we have a transport network which is a combination of your fiber or copper then you have a core part and then you have a cloud domain so you can see that a customer for the customer the important is the data rate because the customer is mostly is a non technical person he just bought a smartphone and he just need a good speed for internet so for him the most important that he will get a good connection and then we get a spectrum spectrum is mostly coming from the regulator of your countries they can give you the band by doing the auction it cost a lot of money it can be below 5 gigahertz it can be above 5 gigahertz which can be millimeter wave or terahertz but so far in developing country is around 2.6 a for and 3.5 for the 5g and there's some unlicensed band like uh, for wi-fi which is uh, 2.4 and 5 so these are the bands which is quite important but we are just talking about here cellular communication we are not talk about wi-fi so more or less from the band and then we have a hard communication with your user need to communicate with the base station and these base station mostly you by from the vendors can be huawei nokia ericsson mostly there are three famous vendors huawei nokia and ericsson which give you this hardware of the base station and then you have the transport part transport part which going to contact connect with your base station with your core transport you have different topology start topology mesh topology routers which is all be part of this transport network and they are using a fiber cable or copper but nowadays they are using a fiber is quite fast and this is also taken from some vendors or third parties and then you have a core part core part is nowadays totally virtualized very few where you are constantly there so they have hard uh, 
presentation we mostly talk on the RAN part and the customer acceptance part. Very few time I will talk on the core and the transport part. Okay, so this is the progress from my country. So we already started de uh, deploying uh, 5G. It's not a big country. We have a border with Spain, and then after Spain, we have a France, and the other side, we have at at Atlantic Ocean. So it's a uh, hundred. privacy so this is a lot of important for the CG because in the CG you can see a lot more than that okay so let's start what happened in the journey which we start from 1g to 6g so it's very important that 
every 10 year we will change our generation in the world in the telecommunication 10 year 10 year 10 year so the shift will come after every 10 year whenever you see the light uh, brown color it will be a value lot of value on that generation when dark the value will be less so in 1980s when you start our network on that time we don't know about wireless communication we use mostly fixed line everywhere we have hmi human machine interface we have a hardware we have a software operating system which is mostly on software we have different uh, application maybe micro a command line i think on that time network and apronet and then after 10 years in 1990s you can see that we start with the first time people heard about the term www and they get valued for some people and also get unvalued for uh, some other people and then apps getting a lot of because microsoft start building on that time and application getting important operating system and hardware is getting less important at that time then again after 10 years when we start uh, our uh, phone coming on the market and you can see that ww now come to the telco system so telecommunication system start using the wwe servers in their networks but not so much but they starting on that time start by sending the mms sms from one network to another network so they are making the system of telco uh, networks and then you have different operating system hardware so has so valued and devalued again to the demand of the traffic and then in 2020 see we uh, in the 2020 now we have this um, web clouds where we have the networks getting valued but because everything is getting inside cloud so that getting a lot of valued and then if you see from the back we have apps operating system hardware and sm they are hardware getting smaller and smaller that's why they're getting because trans transistor size getting very small when you come to the chip industry and human machine interface as well and what happened in 2030 which we call as a 6g because after every 10 years we need to do the island so then after 40s a 50 60 70 this is the 60 70 g will come so web of cloud will come to the data centers cloud everything will be in the cloud your digital signal processing apps everything will stay in the cloud network have no value so this means all the value is in the cloud like in the first picture i showed you you have private cloud you have uh, public cloud a lot of other will become and operating system will be virtualized hardware is only the rf part mean only your screen because everything will be in the cloud and the human machine interface will be, will be a hologram so this means in 930 everything will be hologram you can see the journey where we start with the pure hardware now we have to go to pure virtualized world where the hardware have very very few value only everything will be software like right? so we are getting all the concept from computer sciences to the our telecommunication engineering Actually, this is a nice picture to understand where we are going. So, if we uh, let me hide this, yes. If we start uh, this uh, with the 6G, before 6G, it's very important to understand where we are now. So, if you see from 1G to 5G, whenever we develop our solution, our network, we always think smartphone mobile phone or user is our only device we always make the solution for this kind so this is very narrow mind kind of approach we are using till 5g and mostly the solution which we are doing is fixed or partially dynamic but not fully dynamic but if we see on the 6g in 6g we need to be more open and more dynamic everything will be changeable in 6g there is nothing will be fixed because of that thing we can say that only speed of the light will be fixed because that is the lumber which coming from the physics and uh, other will be changeable because we use a lot of software defined networks kind of thing which is defined on your programming so we can easily changeable so we don't 
we not only have real world like for example in the 5g we are talking on uh, mostly on the real world like mobile iot machine but we have plus in 6g we also have a virtual world so this means a real world have a virtual copy also running somewhere can be run inside your lab can be run inside in your building can be run inside in your home so we have to make solution not only for the real world and also virtual world because everything will be software to find so you can see that in 5g we only care about our smartphone but in the 6g we not only our end user is not only smartphone can be factory can be car can be it plus the virtual copy of these things as well so you can see that how dynamically we need to change our scenario and what are the challenging which is heading to us okay if you see the compare between the perception capabilities of human and machine you can see that human can do certain things and but machine can do better than that for example if you see the viewing angle of human human can view is more of around 200 degree and theta 130 we can listen around uh, 250 to 2000 hertz and latency we can do less than that 100 millisecond so but we can build such a machine which can do better than human but of course my machine cannot do everything what human can do but on the concept wise we can build such a machine which can have no limitation which human have so this is one of the main uh, building block again behind 6g that we have to make machine smarter by using different things so these are the nice perception between what human can do but machine can have no limits he can do everything because we are making them smart okay and the next target was the ai if you see from the 1948 till 2020 we use very basic communication model we have source this comes to transmitter and then when you send the message over the air you transmit there is some noise come in the message and call the receiver and we just so we do different kind of algorithm method on this blog and try to do lot of innovation till 2020 but now people are really start working on the machine learning and what happened in this model we have transmitter receiver receive so this may be donor and destination our destination will feed back the transmitter and and transmitter will learn from the environment and they can make your system more smarter this is more smarter way and more faster way and this are many way like supervised and supervised i will not talk on this today because most of you already know learning but the basic idea is that we have to transmit back to the transmitter and teach them this is like a child and parents so they teach teach at one time you don't need to teach any more to your kids because they are already smarter so at one time you will see that your receiver will be smart enough you don't need that error anymore so you can see this very efficient system which we put in say, a machine learning in our wireless communication and after 2030 you can see a lot lot there in the market so 6g you can be put 6g on the base station you can put 6g um a 6g means give me ai you can put ai at your uh, mobile phone you can put on your core part and you can put on the transport as well so the ai can be at the device level where you can control the rf power management can be localized where you can do the different elasticity stuff elasticity mean that you can use different use cases according to the throughput latency and other requirement and then you can put on the core part as but but uh, now the problem is that there is no interpolability between ai algorithm because one one ai algorithm will not run on the other device and another device ai it cannot be run on the other device so we have to in 6g we need to make our ai is more smarter and we have to find some interpolability between them and we want to be a uh, to address a open neural network exchange which make is possible to reuse terrain from different network so now we have device level localized end to end but there is no interpolability between them so we cannot they run separately this is what happening in 5g 
but even it's not implemented but at least on the paper it's a lot of paper published but our 6g challenge will be different we need to open and if you run on anywhere so that's the same thing which i explained so on the device level you can think about greenfield innovation to they consume a lot of power your smartphone battery so you find a solution which decrease the power level of your batteries in case localize where you improve your signaling part of your base station and the end-to-end -end ai where you work on the network architecture policy so these are the three main uh, area where you can put but the main challenge how do you can create the interoperability all of them and one model can work on everywhere that is the main challenge so this is the same uh, idea but more uh, detail that you can do at rf level at digital level fiber level cognitive network so where you can implement your ai and how you can interoperability using a cross layer optimization as well so the pointer of the ai the guy who built the ai the effort yokosa bingo so what he want that uh, deep learning is a fundamental fundamentally a blind to a cause and effect so what he said that unlike a real doctor a deep learning algorithm cannot explain why a particular image may suggest disease so this mean deep learning must be used a questionality in the cri critical situation so the question is that nowadays machine learning will not tell us why deep learning this cannot tell us so we need to make our deep learning or machine learning ai more smarter so they will tell us the answer to why they will we can feed some data they will answer it because the data which we feed they know only this if we a cat or dog but they will not tell why it's the cat why it's the dog that is the main uh, target and this is one of the big challenge in 6g that we can expert our algorithm by i don't know how but to tell them they can also capable of telling the answer of why also so this is a quite challenging part in the AI in the coming future. Okay, so now I, the third topic which I explained is the openness, openness of the mobile communication. So if you see on my the left hand side, this is a 4G network and the right hand side is a 5G network. So if you see on the left hand side, the bottom of the, the, the picture here, the device is 75 mega bit he need and then on that time in 4g network we have central office where we have a backhaul then we have a base station then they connect with the core part and the core part mostly everything will be dedicated everything will be hardware and they used to buy to my montina with bandwidth of 10 megahertz these are the acronym you can check it here and then after some time we need to increase our speed of our uh, phone about 300 mega bit per second and then what we did we remove our radio unit and we put our DU to the core office so, so you can see we do the splitting splitting and then we keep our application and core in in the same block so that concept is called cloud ran and this is are started in 2012 by china mobile they already implemented a lot on that and then after in the in enhancement of this will come in the next phase in uh, 2016 where you want to in, even you want to in, internet of things vehicular communication you want more speed so you come from a two by two and dinner to messy mimo with a huge amount of bandwidth around four megahertz use millimeter wave and you can see that again they now they are changing the name in the standards now the first they are the ru now they are call it access unit and now as start virtualization now they put uh, edge and they div uh, divide your 5g core between user plan and central unit and then you have a backhaul and you can see that your application is also start going to be decoupling so now they divide 4g into core part two core part one is control plan one is user plan here everything will be combined now they divide it and then this will all virtualize so they work on nfvs sdn so in this part 
the concept of NFV and SDN will come in around 2015 16 in the network. South Korea uh, Telecom, they already implement this architecture. This is taken from them. They already have this kind of setup where they have the Mac, your Edge Cloud, and you have the different. So they can shift according to your scenario. For example, after that, they come network slicing. For example, if you need ultra high definition radio, what will they do? They can keep your CU here, control plan and user plan stay here, and then they do caching here and they put their contact domain networking upstairs and the control plan only go up. If they need wise, they keep control plan close to the AU and put all these two to the cloud. So depend upon the scenario, they can shift functionalities of one block to another close to the base station and close to the your cloud. It's depend upon your scenario and what is the demand. So this is more efficient because everything will be software. So you can just copy paste your call the classes up and down and you can run it and you improve your throughput latency and KPI. If you can see, we start with the DRAN where everything will fix to the everything will be virtualized. So this, if you see this, all virtualized will be done on the core part. So today I talk about virtualization on the base station part as well. So that you already, I hope everyone knows about virtualization, you know, SDN and NFB, but this is what happened in the telecom cloud. Okay, so this is the more or less the architecture which you can see. This is my 2G network, this is a, a 3G, and this is 4G. So I'm just talking about mostly 4G which is more advanced. We have the e node B, talk with my phone, then I have the involved packet core network. We have serving gateway, MME, and packet gateway and connect with your IP network cloud which can be public or private. This part called core, uh, core part, this is the access and this is the air interface. You can, so, it, so this part mostly contain your hardware like base station and the uh, software, which is uh, if you buy hardware from the Nokia, you have to be buy software from Nokia. Huawei will not work on Nokia and Nokia will not work on Huawei software as well. And similarly for this core part, you need to purchase from some vendor and same hardware service. This is a big problem here that we need to buy hardware and we also need to buy software from the same party. This is not good approach. So virtualization already know how we do virtualization. We have the classical hardware and we can virtualize it by using the off the shelf hardware. So that's what mostly we do on the core part. We know this core part and transport part of our telecom in the computer lab, we can do very nicely this one. So I will not go into detail of this is just a normal picture. So this is just to explain to the people which is not familiar with virtualization. This is in 1994, around 20 years back, 30 years back actually, you have uh, everything, hardware for everything, for music, camera, and everything you need. But now, everything in the smartphone. So because everything is virtualized, we need only one hardware and we have a lot of software running on it. So this is a very nice picture to how we do the virtualization. So that part we need on the hour access part the access part in base station so if you go outside on the base station you can see we have a base station we have antenna then we have a cable coming to cabinet and where we have a bbu baseband unit and our radio unit and this fiber coming to here and all the signal processing will be done here baseband and our amplifier mixture which is called rf will be part of the antenna so to connect with the base station to the antenna, we use uh, this uh, common public radio interface, which connect my base station to uh, to the my cape net. So this will be bought by a different operator. This will be bought by a different operator. This is running with the software. This is also running with the software. So this will not compatible with this, and this will not compatible with this. So they are two separate units, and we have to buy it differently. The network operator need to buy it differently for this is like analog to the digital converter digital to analog because your signal is coming from baseband to rf rf to you have to use that part so this is your hardware this is hardware and software you can see that uh, it's a uh, quite hard for the operator to spend a lot of money to separate hardware this is very specific hardware for that purpose you cannot use any 
you need to buy from the corporate uh, from the vendor and this is also so that ap approach costs a lot of money so we start the operator start using the concept of uh, virtual ran what is virtual ran this is the proprietary hardware for example you bought from the vendor from nokia ericsson and then this is the property hardware again from the same or different operator their own hardware and their own software and then this is their property interface so this is structure which we are using nowadays operator using nowadays so what is the idea of virtual ran then so this means hardware keep the same we buy from the huawei or nokia interface is also same we again need to buy it but what we doing now we doing this virtualized we use a lot of servers from the laboratory our labs like intel x server x86 and then we can use the virtualization on top of this so this means we don't need to buy this from the vendor anymore we can virtualize it by using a hardware can be but we need to uh, virtualize from the software coming from the different vendor so this idea is that hardware come from the your of the shelf and the software can be virtualized on different hardware but we want to go one step further so what is the open ran open ran is everything open in the virtualized ran we have only virtualized our baseband part but now in the concept of open ran our first part which is close to the base station rf is also a general process processor which is also of the shelf hardware it can be purchased from odm ordinary design manufacturer or equipment manufacturer or hardware vendor for example lot of oper operator don't build their own phone but they use the monogram they can say to the different company please build phone for them and they put the monogram of their operator and they sell it this is what odm people do and then you can see that of the shelf and product hardware as well and open interface from any vendor so in open ran concept this means any hardware can run on any software and any software can run on any hardware of course to implement this all the operators should be agree between them that they will happy to do this but this will decrease a lot of lot of cost because you are using very ordinary hardware from your uh, shelf and you can put the software from the different vendor to run it and you can see that even everything will be open so everything will be virtualized so you can develop lot of algorithm lot of solution without worrying if it's running or not on that hardware or not it will run out so this is what gpp and ssp gpp is a general processor central cpu very strong uh, cpu coming from intel x86 aim and it's very easy because you can easily decouple control plan and hardware plan from the cpu you can and there is another a uh, category of processor which is called uh, single processor it is difficult mostly fpgas use that so for the open ran they select gpp processor because they must faster and easy to deploy rather to spp processor so you can see that now this is already available in a white box one ran you can see this ran is available this is a hardware the any software will run on it so in the future you can see lot of operator can use this because you can use your own equipment you can test in your own laboratory on you can build your own lab if you have it's not so expensive but uh, you can see that you can use it inside your lab uh, to do lot of experiment but of course you need to connect this with the antenna so if you see the distance bit, uh, different between the traditional and the real one you can see that in the old one they are belong to a particular operator proprietary they are embedded they are fixed integrated but in the open ran they are software defined you can uh, decouple the control and data plane they are programmable and flexible and you can do lot of innovation and on very on very fast track rather going to the network can do that one very easily so this is i'll just give you a simple 
simple example so you can understand very clearly what is happening so what happening on the top of the row you can different services are running which can be facebook whatsapp skype and then you have the core part core part is uh, where you do most of the, your nfc nfbsd and kind of work and then you have a transport where i explained you in the first slide fiber and optics and then you have a proprietary ram software and program so this means this is the typical 4G and 5G network where all belong to the sum of the operator and, and down you have a hardware. The hardware, property hardware means base station 1, base station 2, base station 3 on top of them is a different software running which also belong to some vendors. So think about that. Now let's take an example scenario where vendor 1, vendor 1 can be think about Huawei is supplying the virtualized software. So they have off the shelf so this means its software will run on every every hardware the aaa the, this a can be nokia or or this ericsson hard base station and software from huawei will run on this this is the beauty of your virtual ran and then just imagine after some time operator said no i want to change a nokia to the ericsson so if we change the new base station with the bb the same software will be run on the and another from different hardware and similarly if he change everything he don't need to change software he just change the hardware he put that same software will be run on top, on top of that and if we want to update the software that a version 2 it can be run on safe without doing anything you can see its life is much much easier so this virtualization is happening on the base station part core part you already know transport code part already know nfv sf stn I, I didn't talk on this topic because that is not a topic so i'm just explaining you the base station virtualization this is concept is called open ram so in the standardization 3pp also doing a lot of effort because of architectural changes so you can see the 4g what they have this rru you can think rru as a base station and you have baseband unit Baseband will contain the, uh, the digital signaling port and your core part, and they now enhance to the CU, DU, or this is just the split. They divide the BBU also into CU and DU. So the same thing happening, I just want to emphasize on the picture that same thing. If CU comes from the V2 different version, DU come from C, so they will run on top of everything. So you don't need to worry about the hardware hardware we came you just need to upgrade your software and it will run on every hardware this is the main concept of your open brand this is the openness in the 6g network you can see a lot in next come not possible now because still there is work to be done but this is the direction which we are going now so this is the open RAM alliance if someone is trusted they can check it this is the combination of a lot of operators which are agree and they are making this architecture for the CGIPP in the coming year where they are going to deploy. This is a normal architecture of that. Okay, so in the third part, I'm going to talk on the 6G services and scenarios. So in the 6G, everything will be virtualized, software defined. Your RAN part, which I already, already explained you, that is called Open RAN, and then we have a core part, Arch virtualized. So we are moving from our real world to the virtual world and everything will be virtualized and this is the hardware based to the software based networks. So one of the technologies which is quite important, which is going to shape 6G is the digital twin. Digital twin, I explain you, is the virtual copy of your real world. So digital, what happened you are doing in outside world, you can easily do inside it. So you put huge amount of sensors, sensors coming to your lab and you can fix it without going through in for example you have a car you go to mechanic every year like in europe but in the future mechanic have a twins of your car because data is continuously coming toward the your mechanic and if your car is uh, malfunctioning so he will just put the command in the computer and that software will upgrade inside your car automatically and your car will be functioning well if it's not a problem of hardware, software you can easily do on the by digital point. 
the same like the human body doctor don't need to open the heart all the time since the data is coming outside the human body and doctor can virtualize the heart kidney that you can do a lot of efficient thing this and to uh, come this technology we have a lot of challenges of throughput latency and other challenges which will come which you you will see in the coming years so this is the fusion between uh, physical smart space and the smart uh, cyber space you have a city you make a digital twin of whole city inside your lab in a nice simulation way and you put lot of sensor inside your data and this will coming and this uh, 24 of uh, 24/7 the data is coming to your lab and you can predict the city traffic a uh, heat temperature humidity and many many other things which are without going to send the people to the site and you can upgrade the software and this will shape this will really help you shape your city better and you can easily predict what will your city behave after 5 or 10 year if we have this at the time of covid we definitely have very nice solution but of course different but unfortunately we haven't deployed this solution so far so we don't know the prediction about the city uh, traffic pollution so this is you can see is quite amazing thing with digital twin we can do and on top of this we can use different ai algorithm which will help to make our city smarter and then is the virtual era. the reality virtual reality is also a part of 6g where you can have a virtual image so then the, the most important is that we need to send our uh, senses five senses uh, sight hearing touch and smell to the virtual world how we'll do that will be i come into the later on this presentation then augmented uh, reality is also one of the things which you can see but i will not be most of the guys know about this so you have a if you put your screen on top of any building they will tell you the direction or the name of the shops where you want to go that is augmented reality and then you have a mix mm, reality that you be a part of the picture you will be not but you feel it is there so that is all work under your mix reality kind of thing so we have the augmented reality we have the mixed reality mixed reality that nowadays we just see the picture outside in the 30 degree but in future we want to be a part of the picture which is 30 to 6 3 to 6 degree height depth left right angles everything we want to be a part of the story as well so this is the example of your mixed reality and the augmented reality that you have a smart google glasses which we able to connect see you guide you track you everything so these are the two different example of augmented and mixed reality so i don't know why is taking a long time okay so if you see the all the use case which i explained you in sig g so if you can see that the main idea of sig g is to decrease latency if you see the media in the media we start with the text images voice now we end up with the hologram if you see the industry we need to connect the under the latency should be around 25 millisecond to 10 millisecond in tactile internet again feelings you want to send your feelings less than 1 millisecond and vicular network is also latency so you can see the latency is the main key parameter for the sigg that we need to decrease the latency and latency can be is very difficult to increase decrease the latency and improve the throughput or cyber efficiency at that same time so that will be the main target of the next generation network so also spectrum which i talked in the first time is very important most of the time government agencies will are sending a spectrum they give the different options and operator will buy so this is always a property of the government and this is always for the operator but i believe in future each user like you buy a sim card you can also buy your own spectrum and machine can also order its own spectrum. for example machine is so smart they are working in the factories or they are in the smart houses and they need a spectrum to communicate with some device so they can order the spectrum so they have a different spectrum model we are 
looking at it, which depend upon which kind of frequencies, either you need below six, above six, above six, depend upon the physics of your wave and your dynamically policies that how much transmit power you need to send. You cannot transmit more than certain amount of power because of your regulatory requirement. And you have to also be take care that if the chipset of that is available inside market. So this is a different spectrum model. This is mostly in people from the government, which is, is sending the spectrum for the operator. But in the future, this will be initiated by either a network, a user, or the machine, and can be used by different mobile operator, micro operator, virtual satellite, and user, and maybe more, many more, which we still don't know, can be some other guys also. Okay, it's coming like slowly. Okay, so if you see in the um, past, in the past, we have three use cases, which is web, multimedia, and application, and the main Use cases for that is data and voice, where we need no latency because we don't care because on that time latency was not important. And then medium reliability and throughput. And then in 5G, the use cases will be changed. We need enhanced mobile broadband, machine type communication, ultra reliable and low latency communication. And there we have data voice and tactile internet where we need a very low latency, high reliability, and high throughput. But if we talk about 6G and 6G, we have a new media, which we call hologram. We have te teleport services, and we have new infrastructure. And here, the most important is we have tactile internet, and plus we have holograms also. And here, we need very low latency, high reliability, and throughput. So these are three main things which we, we want to Take care, low latency, high reliability, throughput. Reliability and throughput, I believe, easy to achieve, but very, very difficult to achieve is low latency in the head of high reliability and throughput. So we are moving from 2D to 3D. We are moving from two senses to five senses, gigabit to terabyte data rate, and we millisecond to some millisecond of latency. So we need new media, for example, hologram, we need new IP addresses, we need new services and new architecture. So I already explained the previous slide, holographic teleport, high precision services, deterministic services, best effort services, and integrated terrestrial and space networks, federated network, which is, you can see a lot nowadays, decentralization infrastructure and terrestrial infrastructure as well. These are the new horizon which you can see in the 6G as well. These are the few buzzwords which I'm going to explain in the next couple of slides. So with the new media, you can see that in, in the new media, you can see human-centric network, virtual uh, tourism, virtual banking, intelligent transport system, with new services, remote surgery, cloud, Programmable control logic unit will be side inside cloud. And your trusted infrastructure where you have blockchain kind of mechanism. And then you combine your space network with your uh, ground network and you have a federated network. So you can see that we are changing the new service, new services, new media, and new So just bit up, bit up technical for hologram because it's quite interesting. So just imagine if you want to send the image of your yourself, like depend upon different country, like in Asia, people are not so tall, but in Europe, people are very tall. So when you create an image of 6.64 uh, tall guys, you need a different pixel according to their height. And the, to do this, we need a different mechanism. It's not only communication, computing, caching, everything. And you need very high transport player and speed to transmit this image. So in size, if it's static, it's okay. But when you want to transmit from one country to another country, it's quite challenging to transport this with high latency and very less throughput. This is a big challenge to fulfill that one. So for example, one of the things what we are doing now is qualitative digitalization on our bits to qualitative digitalization. 
So if you want to send text or voice nowadays, it's very easy because reliability is not often concerned. We don't care about that. And when you transmit the packet, you if you think one byte is lost, you imagine your all packet is lost. So you can send the packet again from one transmitter to the receiver because each and every byte have same signal. But if you want to transmit hologram, the, in the hologram latency is very, very important. So for that, you you don't need to transmit all the packet again. So because in hologram, every bit have different uh, significance. So if you have a packet, every packet have symbol, every symbol have different value. But in 4G, 5G, when you text and voice, you have one packet, packet contain a lot of symbol and they have same values. So in qualitative digitalization, you just, retransmit the pack symbol which is lost not everything so this is more on a technical point of view you are moving from qualitative digitization to the qualitative digitization and also we started with the best effort services long back in 90s and then now we end with teleport so teleport is the future where you you have to sense your senses over that network so best effort is good but still they are using, but now we are doing a lot of teleports kind of things over the uh, network. The deep services we use a lot, traffic engineering, where you have a lease lines, guarantee precision, but the future will be on teleports. And then if you see, we do a lot of remote surgery that also is let um, very few latency, cloud PCL, you put all of your programmable logic unit of your factory inside cloud you need your transport system is very intelligent. So when you transmit packet from one side of the world to the other side of the world, mostly at the transport layer, we use statical multiplexing, meaning we statically, we average the packet and we transport over the router and we find the best route and, and these things and so on. But that is not to be a case in a 5G. We need a totally a new architecture at that level. I, I will explain in the next slide as well so this way there will be a new functional complement will become like user centric interface user network interface reservation signaling new forwarding paradigm strip itself monitoring home so this will be change of your whole structure so this means So, to wise, you want to transmit here, you want to touch, taste, and smell from one side of the network to the other side of the wall network because it's quite difficult. If he's eating something like pizza, so his family can feel the taste of that pizza as well over the wireless network. This is a quite challenging how we send all this stuff. To do this, he need we have to move from H4. I'm just running out. <laughs> okay. So for example, if someone wants to do the test inside lab, so he can create holo Alice with the holo Bob. And he can transmit over the channel and uh, texture. It's not difficult. Try to test one of the human senses and see how it's uh, Behave. Okay, so far we have using 1G to 4G, we're using this uh, model which we teach our students also in the classes. 